Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. The high def up there, uh, low def right down here. Uh, low def will have the screen share. You guys up there can see it on the back screen. Yes, I've been gone for a minute. Would you believe, I'm going to get into the Fukushima, I'm just letting people tune in. Um, would you believe I lost a power cord for the Samsung computer again? And what's funny is I heard that Samsung didn't make reliable computers. Well, that's not true. They do. They simply don't make reliable power cables. And I have been gone for quite a minute over it because they are as rare as hen's teeth. They are impossible to find. But I have one, and I'm back, and I'm giving you the massive Fukushima update. As you can see, I'm wearing uh, my usual attire for such a, a dire report, as it were. Going to get right into it because I've got people tuning in quickly, thankfully. Um, listen to this. Fukushima's astronomical radiation. Now what the is going on? Now, this is from Science Vibe. This, uh, this is not good. The utility company that operated the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan before it went into triple meltdown might I add, melt through and melt out. That's when the core blows into the city, which is, of course, what we saw in, uh, in Fukushima. It's what the black goo is down there. And it just released some daunting figures about the radiation level. According to reports, the level in the containment vessel of Reactor 2 has reached as, five, as high as 530 sieverts per hour. A monumental increase that was recorded previously, TEPCO had suggested that some kind of melted fuel had escaped. Well, it's not going to get better anytime soon, considering the very long half-life that is on this. At this level of radioacti radioactivity, a person could die from the briefest of exposures, and a robot would be able to operate less than two hours before it was destroyed. Japan's National Institute of Radiological Sciences says the exposure of one sievert of radiation is enough to lead to infertility, hair loss, and cataracts, and four sieverts will kill half of the people exposed to it. Do you understand that? Don't just let me read numbers, and that's not going to do you any good. Really listen to this, okay? Half will die from exposure to four sieverts. This is 530 sieverts. We are talking about a deadly dose of radiation, massively high, unlike anything we've expected or encountered before. And analysts, anal yeah, analysts encourage people not to freak out quite yet. Though the radiation level is astoundingly high, it doesn't necessarily signify any alarming change in radiation levels at Fukushima. Instead, it's the first time they've been measured so far inside the reactor, but others are concerned. Okay, look, that sentence didn't make any sense, and that's why you tune in, because I break this down and keep it rather simple for you, and I don't let them obfuscate. Here's what's happening. The radiation has been that bad there, and it's been leaching into the environment, and things have been washing into it and causing it uh, to wash into the water table and into the ocean, and it's why you can't find... The kind of life, you've seen mass die-offs in the Pacific Ocean. You're not finding the kind of fishing you were. You can't even find a tuna that's not infected, for instance. It's been this bad. It's just that they couldn't get that close to it. So they're saying, oh, don't worry, it's not any worse than it was. The reason you should worry is it's much, it's much worse than they thought it was. You see how cleverly they worded that? Yeah, rewind that, you'll catch what I said. It will be very difficult to operate robots in there for a long time to come and to move the melted fuel, said Fumiyaja Tanabe, a nuclear safety expert. So the finding might greatly affect the decommissioning time schedule. TEPCO has been hoping to start taking the fuel out in 2021. The time to start taking out the fuel is 2021. Yeah, you know, because it'll just stay less radioactive and it'll wait. It won't do us any damage at all. Most likely be delayed as more investigation will be necessary, said Hideyuki Ban, co-director of Citizens Nuclear Information Center. He also cautioned against overreacting. Now, let me ask you something. How do you overreact when we're talking about 530 sieverts 
that could literally kill a robot. Now let me explain to you, for those of you that don't follow the Fukushima update every month, exactly what kill the robot means. Robots cannot be, like him, you see him back there blinking? Robot, he cannot be around it. Because the radiation is so high that on a molecular level, on a microscopic level, it fries the robots. It cooks them from the inside out the same way it does you, the same way it gives you cancer or whatever. It, it cooks them. A person could not be around that for more than mere moments. Robots can't either. Nothing can. Nothing that is expected to work can be around these things. This computer, that, that cell phone, none of it could be. And this is what we see happening all the time with ever greater frequency whenever we're dealing with anything that has to do with Fukushima. For that matter, do you know they had to shut down the only plutonium core reactor, uh, pl plutonium core makers in the United States? They had, to sh they had to shut it down. Why did they have to do that? I can tell you why. Because anytime you're dealing with anything nuclear, you're dealing with an absolutely massive problem that you do not have any way to keep a lid on. You don't have any way to put the genie back into the bottle either. You have absolutely nothing to go on when you go nuclear. Okay, you know, and these things, they make radioactive fuel. Oh, and they tell you that it's safe. You know, they always tell you that it's safe. But they bring these shutdowns. These shutdowns happen because something isn't working. And everybody listening to this is at a huge disadvantage because radioactivity has no taste. It has no smell. In some instances, some instances, but you do get a metallic taste. But if you end up with a metallic taste, friends, by the time that you have that taste, you are already, you are already so unbelievably juiced that it's almost too late to even mention it. I mean, think about the people that were on the, uh, I think it was the USS Ronald Reagan that was in Japan at the time of the Fukushima disaster. Think about how they felt, because they must have been terrified. Do you know that that boat still sails? Or it's radiated for good. You, you can't deradiate a warship. Everybody that gets on that is going to get a dose of Fukushima radiation. Well, the people that were on it are now suffering from some of the most horrendous, mind-blowing health problems that you've ever witnessed in your life. And we're talking, this only happened in 2011. You do realize that cancer is supposed to take a remarkably long time compared to just the few years here to develop as it is. And we're not just seeing cancers. We're seeing heart disease. We're seeing people susceptible to every single cold that comes down the road. We, we see people sick and miserable which is almost always what we see when we're talking about radiation, when we're talking about nuclear power plants, or whether we're talking about nuclear weaponry. It was Helen Caldicott, for those of you that say I don't give any sources, it was Helen Caldicott that pointed out very clearly that the nuclear power industry is a front for the nuclear war industry. Why is it you think we're having so much trouble all over the world with these things? Why do you think of all the things that Donald Trump could have talked about to get elected that he picked Iran's nuclear power plant as a major issue? Now think about it. Now I don't care if you hate uh, the president or not. I personally support him, but I know that a lot of people that tune in for the Fukushima show don't. That's fine. We don't get into it on Fukushima days. But let's say this. Let's, let's hear me out here. Your president, Donald Trump, and you've really got to come up with some issues that matter because Hillary Clinton is all expected to walk right into this, remember? So you pick the most important issues. Don't you think it's quite telling that he picked the nuclear problem in Iran? He felt that it was that important. Friends, they're building that nuclear power plant on an active earthquake zone. Does that sound like Fukushima? Now, you're going to say that there's not an ocean nearby, but that's irrelevant because we know that the initial meltdown in one of the reactors started as a result of the earthquake. Okay, it didn't start as a result of the tidal wave coming in and washing over the generators. 
that happened with the other reactors. So an earthquake can trigger, trigger a nuclear meltdown. It has to be a significant one. Well, they're predicting the same. Who's they? The scientists, uh, Chris Busby, um, other people, seismologists, geologists. Look up Fukushima in Iran if you don't believe me. Do a Google search. Trust me, you'll find that I'm correct. They are moving ahead with all of these things. And you just say nothing about it. Absolutely nothing. Iran is going to have an earthquake equal to that of Fukushima within the next 25 to 30 years. That's about the average lifespan of a nuclear power plant. And what that's going to do is poison the Middle East more than every single terrorist has since the dawn of Islam. Okay? I'll tell you what else it's going to do. It's going to kill more Arabs than every Jew that ever lived. Because the radiation will affect Iran forever. One of the oldest places in the world. And that is exactly what we're looking at. That's why we're seeing these plutonium core plants shut down. That's why we're seeing them tell us not to be alarmed. At 530 sieverts. When 4 sieverts will kill half of the people listening to this if they were unlucky enough to be exposed to it. I mean, what else can you say to that? It is so bad and so large that there almost isn't even words to articulate it. I'll tell you what you can do. There are things you can do to protect yourself. Yeah, you can hit your vitamin C at 3,000 milligrams a day. You can take echinacea. You can take bentonite clay. But there are ways that you can stop this with your pocketbook. Are you invested in Westinghouse? If so, get your money out of it, even if it's a mutual fund. GE is TEPCO, General Electric. They didn't bring good things to life. They brought death to life. So don't support them. Get your money out of their stocks and bonds. Get your money out of their mutual funds and put them into something else. Put them into something that you believe in. Put it into a Riva, maybe. I'm, 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 and I say that off the top of my head because they're creating the water filtration systems. No, I don't have any money from them. No, I'm not invested in them. But it was a joke. Find something that you believe in and donate in it, maybe. Because I'm telling you, if we keep sending our money and investing in GE and Westinghouse and these DuPont reactors and these, these places that are making nuclear fuel and nuclear power and nuclear weapons, if we continue to support this, then we will continue to see problems coming from this. There's no other way that it can go. These problems aren't just going to vanish. They're not just going to go away. And I guess this show is going to be a little shorter than some, but I'll tell you what. Listen to I've got one left, but listen to what I'm saying, because I'm telling you how to fight back here. I'm not just giving you the glum news all the time. I can do that all you want. But it's more than that. Because you, not me, but I used to, we all bought GE light bulbs. We all bought Westinghouse washers and dryers. Well, now it's time to think maybe we don't want to. Yeah, you can buy them used, in which case they don't get the money, but if you buy the parts, they do. We need to start to stop supporting them in total. And there's other ideas. What if the next time they were going to open up a nuclear power plant, a movement like Occupy took over and refused to move. Not get violent. Not hurt anyone. But if we don't step up and start doing something soon, then we're going to get stepped on. We've seen it with Chernobyl. We've seen it with Mavec. We've seen it with Three Mile Island. We saw it with Windscale in England. We've seen that with this plutonium plant that shut down. Yeah, it's not on the level that they are, but how long until it is? We covered last month how the Hanford plant was doing. Did that make anybody listening to this feel any more secure? Because it didn't me when I reported on it, I can tell you that. And that brings us, friends, to the dumb of the day, which, of course, is Kim Jong-un in North Korea. Obsessed with cheese and wine. Now, why am I mentioning North Korea on the massive Fukushima update? If you're still listening to this, the word of the day is uh, North Korea. Put it in the comment line. Let me know where to send your uh, free stuff to. Word of the day, North Korea. Two words, I know. Um, 
the name of the day. This man is dancing on the brink of World War Three. Okay? If he launches, and even if it doesn't hit, because half of what North Korea has doesn't work, but their new ICBM has a range of 6,000 miles. Now, we knew Hawaii was in danger. They have been from this cheese-eating madman for quite some time. They can hit Alaska. We just found that out. But I mentioned this at Teddy Stip, where I also work. How many of you understand that they can hit California if it's done right? by hitting the water and letting the radiation blow over. In two years, they'll be able to hit the military base in Saudi Arabia, according to Sealing and other experts. Look up my work on it today at Teddy Stick, and you'll see I have it all sourced out. America would have to reply if a nuclear missile was launched at us, even if it didn't make it. And the problem is that when they launch nuclear warheads, and this is another reason you tune in, you think of a nuclear warhead, here it is, going up, 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 up in the air. So all you have to do, it's like hitting a bullet with a bullet, but you, you, you shoot an interceptor rocket up and you hit it. Do we have that technology? We do. However, that's not what happens. Because this technology helped win the Gulf War I during the Scud missile attack that the madman Saddam Hussein was sending over. And what was discovered was that you could deflect by doing this. When you shoot your missile, you do this. The missile's flying and the missile goes... Okay. Now, all of those little pieces are dummy missiles. So now you have to figure out which of them is real or take out all of the missiles that are in the sky, including the dummies. So we can't even guarantee that we can take this out. Some people think that if North Korea was to launch an EMP nuclear attack in the winter, he could kill up to 90% of America because we couldn't heat or feed ourselves. Now that number's a bit high, but if they're half right, we're looking at a lot of dead people. So, I don't think it's something that can be just whisked away. I have to reset this phone. Something that can be whisked away. I think it's something that matters and it needs to be looked at very greatly, okay? Meanwhile, this man will launch these missiles. Now, what do you think China and Russia are going to do? Russia is angry because America broke its promise and put weapons on the border of Russia and what used to be the Soviet Union countries while fighting terrorism. Putin's not buying that lie. Now, I'm not a real big Putin fan. He needs to quit buzzing our ships. He's putting us in danger of a major world war here. So what do you think is going to happen the first time? North Korea tries something like this. How about China? Do you know that China is willing to allow themselves to be pushed into stopping North Korea, which any humane country would want to do anyway, on the condition that America stops war games with South Korea if Kim Jong-un falls? America's not prepared to do that, which is a bit of a mistake in my opinion. That's why I'm a libertarian. I wish Trump would do that. He may. He brought us. He's bringing us peace in um, in Syria. So who knows? But China is also not wanting Kim Jong Un to fall because when he does, there is going to be a refugee crisis such as you have never seen. And I'm not talking about Syria, where a great number of the people aren't even refugees. They're just coming to rape, plunder, kill, bomb, and terrorize. I am talking about North Koreans who have grown up thinking that their god, Kim Jong-un, was born under a double rainbow and that flowers blossomed when he walked by. They teach that in school as fact. You think China wants to deal with that? Because they don't. 
and he's interested in cheese, and he's interested in wine, and he's playing with nuclear weapons. And that, friends, more than anything, earns and wins the dumdy of the day. If you'd like to donate to the show, friends, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every single penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. The correct views at hotmail.com. Make sure you leave a comment, hit subscribe, hit share, let me know what you thought of the show. And uh, like I said, listen, listen a couple times to the people that I told you, that list I gave you of people to whom you don't want to donate to. Because these are the people that are causing this nuclear problem, friends. Good night. God bless.